it's a great honor for me to be allowed this opportunity to say a few words to you about uh, my own experience of Sahaja Yoga. And uh, perhaps what I went through may be of some interest to the other members of the Indian Administrative Service in particular. I recall that uh, very early in the 1970s, she began her uh, spiritual movement. And she told me one day that uh, by raising the kundalini of individuals, people could be transformed. And you know, being a bureaucrat, I took it with two pinches of salt. I said, how on earth can anyone transform human beings? Of course, I had no idea as to what Kundalini was, but she told me this is the inherent power in every individual which can be raised, and if it can be raised, then people get transformed. Now imagine me uh, in a dilemma. I said, I, I, mean, I don't know. I, I have never seen anyone transformed. I have worked very hard. I have been a good model, but I have not succeeded in transforming anybody. So I honestly, I tell you, I didn't quite believe it in the beginning. Then she persisted. She went along by herself. I gave no support to her at that stage. Then I got transferred to London. I got elected to a job there in the UN as Secretary General of the Maritime Organization. And there something happened. I had taken up residence in uh, Surrey, a little outside London. I used to commute. And uh, we were together there, my wife and I. And uh, one day, when I returned home at about 8.30 p.m., I went in and went to the drawing room where usually she would wait for me. And there I saw a young man in his late 20s sitting on a sofa. He was a white-skinned person reading a newspaper. And I was a little amazed. I said, who, who is he? Why is he here? Anyway, but what? bewildered me was the fact that he was wearing my clothes. So I said, there's something wrong with me. I'm seeing an apparition. But anyway, I retraced my steps, came back to her. She was in the kitchen. And I said, now, do I see really what I see? And she explained to me. Then she explained to me. She said she had gone to Piccadilly Circus. There she saw a young man lying uh, more or less by the roadside uncared for, apparently very sick. And so she said she went up to him and asked what the matter was. The young man said he was, uh, he not, there was no one to look after him. He was very sick, probably suffering from jaundice and a few other things, obviously under the influence of drug. But she felt somehow some compassion and said, uh, okay, would you like to come with me? I can take care of you. And she asked him to hop into the car, which he did. And that's how he was brought to our house. I felt reassured that nothing had really gone wrong with me, that what I was seeing was true. But I tell you, I was very happy. I said, well, here's a person full of compassion. She is uh, wanting to help a young man, and why not? It was at that point, at that stage. Then I began to see the miracle happening. She treated that young man with a great deal of care and affection and love and Sahaja Yoga. And the boy began to get transformed. He was addicted to drugs. He didn't want any more any drugs. He, his color changed. In about uh, three, four weeks time, he looked like a fine young man. And eventually we came to know that he was an educated person in Australia who was an engineer who had run away from his uh, house and country, taken to drugs in London, and was in a very bad way at that time. Now, he stayed with us for about two, three months, but he became like a beautiful flower. And he was very anxious to get back to his parents in Australia. And we were very happy that this, this, this happened. And then I saw what Sahaja Yoga and what she had done to young boy. After that, 
you know, my bureaucratic questioning mind uh, ceased to function in that way. I began to accept there's far more to it in the world than mere administrative capability. There's something more, there's something higher, something spiritual. The boy went back. Can you imagine the, the, the delight of the parents who got back their lost son? Now, that was the first instance. And then I said, no, I have been wrong. I should have known better. But you know how it is. I mean, some of you who are member service would know. We never accept anything unless it is proved three times over. Well, the, then it, it began to unfold itself. I saw someone coming along, coming to her for vibrations and for transformation, and you know, sitting opposite. And people who were addicted to drugs till yesterday found that they did not have the urge to ask for drugs. People who were alcoholics, she never asked anyone to give up anything. She said, it's your life, but you don't give up drugs. Drugs get away from you. You don't give up alcohol. Alcohol goes away from you. You become a different person. Now, to, to some of the audience, I might perhaps refer to what I always do when I speak, the case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You know that Mr. Hyde seems to disappear from you and you become a total Dr. Jekyll. So I've seen many of that kind, a few in the beginning, and later on quite a number, and now, of course, there are thousands and thousands and thousands all over the world in 80 countries. I have traveled with her to not all of them, but some of them. And it's amazing to see how they are, they are becoming a sort of a new class of human beings, motivated by nothing except what is ethical, what is right. They don't bother about themselves. They bother about others. All the time wanting to do something good, something right. And I must say, she never, I, I, I mentioned to her, she never says, give up this thing. She says, on the contrary, educate yourself, take a job, but do the job well. And, and, and wherever they are, they make a difference. So that is what Sahaja Yoga is doing. Now, how, how has it affected me? You know, in the beginning, I was a very anxious person. Uh, you know, always wanting to be five minutes ahead of time or on time. If I'm slightly delayed, I'm a little jittery. Uh, you know how official life is. A lot of tensions. If you're in the United Nations, I'm dealing with 150 governments. And if you have to deal with the United States of America and Russia and China and what have you, it does mean a lot of strain and stress. But I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, after this experience of mine, I became a different person. And mind you, it was not as if I became careless, not at all. I always punctual to the minute, but not with strain, not with stress. I did not feel as if I was under any great tension anywhere. You do your job and do your job as best as you can. And things turned out extremely well. So this is the message that I wanted to give my friends and colleagues. The, it, is, it is a matter of your wanting to achieve that much of transformation. If you are earnest about it, if you are sincere about it, as I was, I think it's possible to achieve that transformation and nothing helps in fighting tension better than being transformed in this fashion. I have told you she doesn't want anyone to give up anything, but I want to do something more. She herself doesn't give up anything. She is a great spiritual leader, but she is also a very great wife and a very great mother, and a very great grandmother, and now a very great great grandmother, with four generations now. I'll tell you, I'll, I won't take too much of your time. I get carried away sometimes, but once she was in Australia, I was in London, and she rang up our cook from there saying, I hope you are preparing this vegetable for him and that vegetable for him. Now, she is a wife wherever she is, and she's a mother wherever she is. The lesson is, lead your life, Normally, but lead in a different way. When you get concerned about the world, a lot of compassion, concerned about your country, not only just your country, concerned about the world, she is building up a new human society. And uh, 
I'm praising her, I'm not embarrassed. It doesn't matter, she's my wife. But I'm not praising her for nothing. I'm saying, telling you what I've seen. And that is my experience. I hope you will have the same experience. Thank you very much. Before I sit down, I do want to refer to Mr. Ranade. It was wonderful seeing him after many, many years. He had been a, a wonderful friend, a great colleague. And uh, seeing him, I go back to 20 years, 30 years. Uh, thank you, my friend, for your kind words.